Okay, so it's 5.34 in the morning. Um, sorry about this little mop on top of my head. I'm driving home and of course my my heart is heavy. Um, I've been crying on Facebook for quite some time now and I'm, I'm sick and tired of crying. But I can't stop. I can't stop crying. Um, because of my job. I don't understand what, I don't know what, they're using some type of technique on me. I don't know what it is. I feel isolated. I feel um, like nobody wants to hear me and my complaint. Um, I feel like I don't belong there. Um, I feel like they're going to hurt me. I'm afraid of my supervisor. Um, she, you know, I went back to work after being out for two weeks. Uh, on my stress break on a, a stress break due to the stress from the job and I went back to work on the 18th um, due to oh because the doctor returned me because the doctor returned me uh, when I went back to work When I went back to work um, on the 18th, which was, I believe, Thursday, I worked, I, I, I got there and I couldn't find my laptop, like my, my computer to clock in. So because I always knew we were short staff and um, the supervisor wasn't really at the front for me to immediately ask her for assistance. Uh, I decided I proceeded to continue with my daily schedule, which was to, you know, scope out the air, the classroom, make sure that the classroom is safe, and um, do whatever it is that I have to do, and uh, also adjusting, adjusting to to the classroom because I was gone for two weeks. So at one point I sat down and I kind of scope out the area. Um, <laughs> I had to uh, because I'm experiencing memory loss I had to um, memory, memory I had to um, re basically reintroduce myself and readjust myself as far as the classroom is concerned um i had to try to see if i could remember the children names so i was looking at each individual cubbies i gave a couple of kids hugs because they came in crying i rubbed on some of them backs um one of them told me that I have a beautiful smile. <laughs> Anyways, don't mind the tears. I'm just hurting. It's five o'clock in the morning. I should be sleeping. I should be getting some rest. And I'm sitting here worried about my job that I'm not even at. I'm not even there. I'm not even working there and I'm still being affected after two weeks of being away. Um, the doctor took me off because it was just too much stress. Um, so I returned as she told me, as she ordered me because honestly I did not want to go back because I was afraid of my supervisor. I wrote this company three different letters. You know, everybody's saying quit, quit, quit. But why should I quit? Why should I quit? I'm not doing nothing wrong. Why should I quit? Like, 
If I quit, it's just, I'm not doing nothing wrong. All I'm doing is going to probably go to work late every so often because of my kids. Saying goodbye to them in the morning is kind of hard. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So that would make me be like three minutes late, you know, sometimes eight minutes. It depends on, you know, my kids and the attention that I give them before I leave because I don't see them. I don't see them in the daytime because I'm always working. <laughs> and then when I come home from work, from working at that, at this comp at the company, I be so tired. I be so tired, you know, because I'm and we're understaffed and overworked, you know. So I try to spend my little time with my children before I leave and go to work. And I want to make sure that when I go to work, my kids, the last thing my kids see is me hugging them and kissing them and telling them that I love them every day, you know. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, back to what I was saying, I got sidetracked, back to what I was saying, um, I have a lot of memory loss due to my stress, I was recently diagnosed with anxiety disorder, and I've never had that. None of my family members have it. None. None of them. I asked my cousin. None of them have it. None. You know, um, I'm losing weight rapidly. Rapidly. I lost 30 pounds. I lost 30 pounds. <laughs> I'm making this video not to be selfish, but to just bring awareness of this. Uh, and this workplace bullying is still going on. It's still going on. And uh, working for a company that's non-union, um, as an employee, you feel you feel horrible because um, I don't want to quit my job, and I do not want to get fired. But I cannot continue to go through this abuse. Like this is abuse. I feel like I'm being abused by my supervisor, and the company is not backing me up. The company is not even there. So I'm like, are they working with her? Are they working with her? Like, why ain't nobody helping me? I'm calling. I'm, I'm asking for help. And when I ask for help, they turn around on me and tell me that I need to fix myself. I need to learn how to communicate. You know, it's just so hurtful. It's just so hurtful to see that, you know, because my bills got to get paid. Like, they playing around with my money. You know what I mean? My bills got to get paid. Like I said in one video, my daughter asked me, what am I going to do? And she asked me, mommy, are we going to be homeless? Do you know how fearful that is? Over working for a petty employer? Somebody that don't want you to speak your mind? I want to heal to stifle you from being in your independent self, your authentic self. I'm not a bad person. I'm not aggressive. I have a mouth. That's it. You know, but I don't, I don't um, be using my mouth as a weapon. I use it as a communication tool. I use it to talk about things that I don't like. I use it to talk about things that works for me. And for what for example i say use meditation in the classroom my supervisor she have her master's in psychology and instead of her agreeing with me using meditation she said to me uh you think that people you think that people have to do everything you say supervisor why do you hate me that much you know that i was right when i say meditation you have your master's in psychology come on why don't you stop being so petty? We're all brothers and sisters. We are all brothers and sisters. We just look differently. But we're all in this together. And if I don't have no support in with from the company that I work for, I don't have nothing. It's like I'm going to work as a zombie. 
I don't want to go to work there. I love the kids. I love what I do. I love the kids that I work with. I work with um, the lower econ economic uh, class citizens. Some of them. Well, most of them. Because that's what uh, um, Head Start does. They, 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 they dig for people that need resources. These children need teachers like me in the classroom. People uh, as myself that's passionate for what they do. I believe in the philosophy of a company, but I don't believe in this philosophy no more. I don't. And I do not know what to do. I don't know what to do. I contacted so many people and everybody just call this number, call this number, call this number. You know, I think I need, I need to contact workers come. I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. Uh, maybe 211. I'm going to call them tomorrow. I'm going to call 211 tomorrow and see what I should do. For the first time, I have to use 211. And I'm tired of explaining my story. It's the same thing. I have it's the same thing. You know, I went back to work after the doctor ordered me. I know I went up there one day because I needed my uh, charger for my laptop. And um I asked my supervisor if she could go get my my, my personal property. She came out she brought me this bag. She brought me this bag that, that that they gave me. She brought me this bag right here. And it was full of trash. Some stuff that I really didn't need. Um, but what I needed was my... Uh, I, what I needed was my charger to my laptop. I needed this. And because this, this laptop was dead. And um, I wanted to email my doctor. You know, I just wanted to... I just wanted my laptop charged. And I went up there. I know I was looking raggedy. Which... But I was fine. I was fine. I was scared of her, but I faced her. I faced her. And um I told her that I'm I'm not there to start anything. I told her I said I'm just here to get my, my personal property. Um I said my I told her about my laptop card. I told her about my case for my laptop. Um, and she went in there and she came out with the bag that I just showed y'all. And she came out also with some other crap. You know, a little box. I didn't really, I didn't really need that. But I, what I told her was I, I need to get the cord. The cord that's inside, you know. It's inside my, my cabinet. She went in there. She came back out. She goes... Uh, Miss Hay, I don't see anything, you know, and I'm like, I know it's in there because that's where I left it. It's in the bag, and she go, I don't see anything. Uh, I said, well, could you just go look one more time? She go, well, I'll go look one more time, and she's standing there, um, like I was done talking to her. Why was you still standing next to me? Why would you even still standing next to me? I was done talking to you. Why didn't you just walk away and go get the bag like I asked you instead of standing next to me and trying to go inside my, dig inside my brains using your degree again? Remember, you have your master's in psychology, so you know exactly what you're doing. You see that my mind, you know that my, my mind is in, a, is, in a, is in another level, it's in another place, and you try to like dig into me just by you standing there. You know what you're doing to me. Um, let's see. So I said, "What?" I said, "Aren't you gonna go get the cord?" I said, "Why are you still standing here?" You know. And then she goes, "Oh, well, I don't have to go get. Uh, I don't have to go. Whatever she said, I, I can't remember." It's basically saying, I don't have to go get nothing with you with that attitude, you know. 
So I was talking to the psychiatrist on 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 my other line, and she hear me saying, "Okay, hello, doctor, hello, doctor." She hear me tell it, saying like I'm like letting her know that I'm talking to my doctor. Like, please step away from me. You know, um, I could have walked away, but I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. But she is in her right mind. She's in her right mind. You know. Um. So she go well. I'm not gonna give you. I'm not gonna go and get nothing blah 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 so i asked the, the other lady that was standing next to her, i said look chanel i said chanel i'm not here to cause no problem i said i said michelle is giving me a hard time right now i said could you please go get my uh i said could you go look in my cabinet you where the butterflies are i said could you please go get it's a bag i just need the bag i just need the bag with the coins And my supervisor said to the lady, she said, <clears throat> she said, um, I'm the supervisor in charge. She cannot go get anything for you. So, I was making Chanel and I was making her and she was pleading with me. She was like, I'm sorry, I can't go get it because she said I can't. So I said, it's okay. Before I said anything to her, I said, you know what? I said, I've ducked up what you're doing to me. And I said, you know exactly what you're doing to me. You're using your degree against me. Your degree. You know, she knows what she's doing to me. Um, I don't know exactly what it is called, but I know it's some type of intimidation technique. Um, I'm not intimidated by anyone. Um, but God, ain't nobody putting breath in my body. There's nobody on this earth that's giving me air. Until then. Until then. The only time I will fear you is when my anxiety kicks in. <laughs> and you have to torture me for my anxiety to, to, to trigger it, you know? Um... This is the same lady that I'm telling y'all. I was on my period and I asked her if I could just go home 15 minutes early to go take a shower and come back. My period came out of nowhere, I told her. And she goes, well, you have to stay here until Michael put the kids to sleep. And Michael is the teacher that used to work with us, but he quit. Um, See, I'm remembering these things. It's six o'clock in the morning and um yeah I forgot so yeah so Michael is that person and I should just drop two grocery stores This is so hard for me. I get up every day and just pretend as if I'm happy and I'm not. You know? I don't know what to do. I don't know who to contact. I just contact the news station, Channel 5 News, because I don't know. Like, because maybe they could help me. Look, I'm losing weight. Look at this. Look at this. My bones. Starting, it's starting to appear. I'm losing weight. I used to be bigger than this. Stress. Stress will kill you. And I'm not trying to die over no stress. Um, so, I don't know. When I went there on my lunch break that day when they returned me, the doctor returned me, uh, I went outside. I told my teachers, I said, I'm going on my break. I worked for about an hour and a half. And when I went outside, the supervisor was standing outside talking to a parent. And then she was talking to a parent and she saw me and she looked like, and she locked the door. She locked me out. She locked me out. So I got locked out. I'm telling her to open the door because I was already working. 
I am of no threat to either her, my co-workers, nor the children. I was in there working calmly, um, helping the children um, spell the first letters of their life, oh, the first letters of their name. Uh, doing what I'm supposed to do as my as as a return teacher from a stress leave. And here I am back to round zero, stressing again. I'm scared of my supervisor. She's evil. Um, even if the company probably did tell her, I don't know, some, something went wrong. Well, why do I have to be in the middle of it? I'm just returning from my doctor's stress leave. I'm returning to work. Why would you do this on the day I return? Like, don't you think that I'm going to be forever terrified? Don't you think that? That I'm going to be forever terrified? Hello? No. I don't deserve that. I don't deserve what this company is doing to me. And they're like making a mockery of me. Um. Then when I got home, I, no, I'm knocking on the door. I'm like, let me in, let me in. You know, and... Nope, it was a lady that was sitting on the chair, an older lady. She looked at me, she shake her head. She like, I can't help you, my sister. And I'm like, okay, fine. You can't let me in. I understand that. And... What I did was... Uh, see, because I'm, I'm memory lost, I'm trying to remember, so... After that lady said she can't help me, I started crying even more. And I mean, I was crying, but I, I didn't see any tears. Like, I was crying, but it's like no tear wasn't there. <laughs> I'm like, I can't believe this. I got fired. Like, am I fired? She like. And then she says, uh, HR is going to communicate with you through the mail or something, whatever. Something. I say, am I fired? She goes, she never opened the door. I saw a no trespassing sign. So, with me, that it's already, I already got in trouble with the law. I'm not about to let no job call no police on me. I can't afford that. Not right now. Not in this pandemic. I can't even go to. I can't even. Look. There's no way anybody gonna come and arrest me in the middle of this pandemic. I'm gonna try my very best to stay out of everybody's way. The girl that socked me in my face at Chateau, <coughs> Kiara, DJ Cool Wife. Um, I forgave you. You socked me and I asked for you to apologize to me. And you, I'm not going to apologize to you, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. You don't have to apologize to me. I'm not even, I didn't even hit you back. You better be lucky I didn't grab you by your hair and just drag you. I could have, but I changed my life. Changed my life. I don't know if I'm going through a period, a series of tests, but when you socked me my nose, it felt like, you know what, I'm going to contact ABC News. It felt like, um, what did it feel like? It felt like my nose was bleeding. You socked me so hard, and, and I didn't react. I, Talita, didn't react. So, when my employer locked me out of the site, I could have probably went crazy. Let me hear this, mother lover. I could have probably went crazy, but I didn't do it. I just sat there, had this little dumb, funny look on my face, like, did I get fired? <laughs> What did I do to you, supervisor? Please. What did I do to you? Other than speak the truth. Hmm? 
when that other teacher, um, when that other teacher called another parent and I said to you, this parent called, no, this teacher called the parent and the teacher basically fabricated a story about me telling the parent that I said I'm going to be that parent's uh, daughter's teacher. Never said that. I don't even have that lady phone number. So how could she lie on me? And I and I and I tell you this, right? And you said and I said, you know, I said, I think that's unprofessional and tacky, you know, and what you said to me, uh, no name calling. No name calling? I'm not calling any names. I'm just telling you what I see in what this teacher did. It's unprofessional and tacky for a teacher to call a parent and start talking about another teacher about this parent without her knowledge. If it's not something positive. You don't think it's unprofessional and tacky? Miss lady that have your master's degree in psychology? No? Or I'm just the one that's just like, oh, you tripping. Get it together. Even if I don't get an opportunity to work back for this company. I asked you a question the other day when you was trying to write me up. I asked you, when are you going to change? You're not hurting me, actually. You're hurting yourself with your own karma. Okay? I might go through this physical, mental pain that you're torturing me with, I might go through it. But guess what God told me? I'm not going to fall. I'm going to have to go through all the crucifixion like Jesus did. I'm going to have to go through it. One of y'all probably just be bold enough to kill me. And I will feel just the same way Jesus felt when he was betrayed by Judas. And I feel like I'm being betrayed. I feel like most of these people in my life are Judases. <laughs> Do I have any proof? Nope. Only thing I could do is talk about my experiences. Um, how I feel. And what people are doing to me. That's all I could do. There's nothing much I could do. You know? Um, uh, and not give up. You know what I mean? So, I think I'm getting sleepy, finally, at 6.02 in the morning when I should have been sleeping from the night before. And, you know, insomnia. I go through this. I go through this. And my job can see that I'm, I'm they're damaging me. Like, they can see that. Or they could see, they know what they're doing and they just, whatever, like, blah, 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 blah. So, with that being said, I'm sleepy. My supervisor never let me in the door. And, oh, I just don't want to have nothing to do with that company. I don't know what to do. My health is being jeopardized. Um, I'm not being treated, understaffed, overworked, all of that. And still trying. I got this car note to pay. I got my rent to pay. Um, when I took this car out, I, um, I had made a decision to, you know, work for this company for a while. So that's the reason why I took this car out. I just took the car out like maybe three months ago. Four months ago. Brand new car. Brand new car. I got the car because I know that I have a full-time job. And I know that I had no intention of quitting. And I knew that I was going to be able to pay off this car by a certain, like, a couple of, you know, a certain amount of months. But, but, 
that's not the case right here. I'm going through something with my employer. I don't even know if I have a job. That's why I just tell them, just go ahead and fire me. I don't want to be wondering if y'all going to keep me or not. Just fire me. Let me go. I'm not quitting. I came back to work and you guys locked me out. You locked me out of the door. And then you put up a no trespassing sign. Like, what is that about? A little makeshift paper believe trespassing sign. Not even an original one. That's just a whatever copy. A copy of a no trespassing sign. Then, later on in, in the evening, they want to call me and tell me that I'm on administrative leave. First of all, when you put an employer on administrative leave, an employee on administrative leave from looking at Google, Google said that you got to tell the employee before you put them on administrative leave that they're being placed on, on administrative leave. You can't just put somebody on administrative leave for no reason. I was at work. I didn't leave on my lunch break. I was on my break when you locked me out. I I know I have some type of rights. Like, come on. There is some... I have some type of rights. You know, I just feel like as an employee, I just feel like my rights are being violated. Like, come on. I have my bachelor's for crying out loud. I love children. So... Why isn't this company backing me up while I'm being abused by my supervisor? And are y'all all working together? Like, what is this? I'm confused. I'm lost. Now I'm really fearful for my supervisor. I feel like I'm going to be inside working with the kids and she's going to be outside tampering with my car. That's how unsafe I feel working with this lady. So, I don't know. Maybe that is what she's supposed to do to us. Some type of intimidation technique. Because all the employees, comes, they comes to me and they complain. They tells me why they quit. They tell me why they getting ready to quit. And I just listen. I just sit there and I listen. And all the complaint that I heard, it was that it was towards the supervisor and the company it has nothing to do with the kids like if I'm supposed to quit right now the kids don't have nothing to do with it it's the company that I work for and now my supervisor that I've been complaining about I wrote three letters to HR one of them I said help and you think that they would try to reach out to me and say, oh, Miss Hay, let's dig deep into this and see what we can do for you. Nothing. Other than, you need to work on the yard. Duh. And every, like, when they call me to talk to me, they always got to bring up past issues. Well, I was talking to them about Michelle, my supervisor, and they go, uh, at the end, uh, somewhere in the meeting, they go, well, um, what they say? I forgot. I was talking, I forgot. I go through a lot of memory loss um, while I'm talking. It's due to stress. But um, I use the beach as one of my therapies. I go to the beach and I dance. I, I go to Manhattan Beach. I dance, I meditate. I do Facebook lives, uh, like reenactments of what's going on in my mind. Um, and all those people that's torturing me mentally, they, I feel sorry for y'all. I really do. All right, so I'm sleepy. I need to go upstairs now. Hell, this is it. My mama bought me, my mama got me this. I love it. I love this. I think I'm going to let this be my little clutch. Which is like, oh yeah. Can my phone go in here? I'm gonna bring this upstairs and, and start packing it. Yeah. So basically, I'm done with this video. Getting ready to go.
go upstairs. Oh, shuffling. I need to shuffle this for later. And that's about it. I'm just going through here with my job. I'm not a bad person. You know, if I, you know what I'm saying? If I was violent, this is what I walk with. If I, if I was violent, I would have just pulled this out. I, I just wanted it, you know? What's that about? I'm not a violent person. I just don't know how to close this. I just... I am not a violent person. Somebody left this at the job one time, and I found it. And I was, I was, uh. I just want to know why I can't close this. And I don't, I don't want to cut myself. <laughs> you know? But yeah, my supervisor, she is evil to the next level. And... I don't know if they working with her in the office or what, but I feel some type of way. So, I don't know what I'm going to do for money. Um, I just, I just don't want to be there no more because I'm just mentally, I'm tired. I'm tired, um, and that's about it. So, I'm going to try to see if I can get at least an hour, two hours of sleep. And this is what I go through, you know. Sleepless nights. Whatever. Well, I can't do no more Facebook Live for now. So, I'm going to be doing videos. And I'm going to be posting them. Nobody really watches my lives anyway. But, I, I'm just going to post them on YouTube. Uh, most of the videos that I made is just going to be thoughts that run through my mind that I do not want to hold on to, but it's still in my mind. So, um, it's a lot of things that I have to work on as far as myself is concerned. I'm working on myself. Um, my doctor is proud of me. She apologized to me. She apologized to me. Because I told her, I said, I don't feel like, I don't feel like, I just don't feel like you're supportive of me right now, doctor. Because she's going to say to me, for me to control my emotion. I can't control my emotion, but when you have anxiety and your, your anxiety is flaring up and it's being triggered, you can't control it. And I use the beach to control mine. And it's working. So she did tell me. She apologized to me for the comment that she made. And I told her it was okay. And she is not really encouraging me about medication anymore. Um, after I told her that my, that my supervisor locked me out. She had her eyes wide open. She said, why would she do that to you? I said, doctor, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, I feel like there's a lot of Judas's around me. I don't do things. I don't do wrong things to people. Well, maybe not anymore because, you know, as you grow, you get older and wiser and I'm 40 and it's like, no, don't do that. Don't say that. Nope, you can't talk about people like that. Somebody socked me my nose. Hey, don't you hit her back because you for to go to jail. <laughs> Been there, done that. I don't want to know. That's the reason why I didn't hit Kiara back. Not that I'm a punk, but... I'm 40. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Like, we should not be fighting each other. <laughs> we should just be trying to enjoy the little life that we got left on Earth. Sun is dying. The sun is completely going down. We don't know how long the sun is going to operate. And without the sun, we all perish. So what if one day we wake up 
and the sun is just snatched out of the solar system. You know what's going to happen? All the planets that's being held by the sun because the sun is uh, is a ma it's a magnetic field that's holding the sun in place and everything gravitates around the sun. Everything revolves around the sun. The sun is the thing with the magnet. The sun has the magnets to pull all the planets in the circular motion that they're going in. The sun. So if the sun is snatched out, what's going to happen to us? We in this little bubble that's called Earth, you know, we're in a bubble. I just feel like it's a big blue, green, and white bubble. It's going to pop. It's either going to pop, you know, after you let the, a bubble float around in space, you know what happened. After a while, it floats up and then it pops, right? We're living in a bubble, people. Why is there even a war in in any country? We're all gonna die. Like, is this how we telling our creator that we're grateful for the little time that he did continue to give us? Is this is this how we're gonna return our thankful favor by killing each other? Let that sit in your thought for a minute. We're not supposed to be fighting and killing each other no more. That That's the thing of the past. You know what I mean? When the New World Order came, one of the New World Order was for us not to kill each other. And y'all missed that. Y'all still deploy soldiers. Like, come on. When are we going to all work collectively together as one unit? When are we going to see... The, the nice white house with the white picket fence. When are we all going to be able to be able to enjoy that? Instead, we're down here struggling like slaves. Mental slaves. We are... This is not right. Let me get out of this car. It's time for me to get out of here. I'm just going to get out and bring this upstairs because I'm so sick. I'm sick and tired of this. What about these bags? I thought they was all the same size. And they're all different sizes. I, you know, I paid $4 for this. But I think they could work because even though they're all different sizes, they can still hold my groceries. So this is going to be my new grocery bag when I go to the grocery store. I'm just going to grab all of this. It's another one, an orange one. It's really, really big. But it is what it is. You know, I'm finna go upstairs. Wow. I'm over here uh, running this car like, uh, like, like I could really afford this gas. Oh, gas is expensive. Alright, let's see. Make sure I got all the trash out. Alright, only thing I gotta do is clean my window. I gotta go upstairs and get the windshield, Windex, whatever. And then come back down. Oh, let me get my wallet because I don't want nobody breaking in this car. Mm -hmm. I don't want nobody breaking in this car, taking my wallet, whatever. I'm going to bring this upstairs because I got to go through my purse. I'm going to bring this upstairs because I don't want nobody breaking into my car. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is a ghetto. I live in a ghetto. I live in South Central. South Central LA. But not because I live in South Central LA. That doesn't mean that I'm going to be South Central LA. I'm going to be, I'm not going to be in the statistic, statistic, or whatever you want to say. And I do not want my children to be a part of statistic. So they're going to see me struggle. They're going to see me cry. But one thing that they're not going to see me do. Is give up. <laughs> um, like this. I'm gonna shut this up because I know they probably up now. Because these kids, they don't sleep, you know. They don't sleep. They they sleep for about a couple hours. When I say that, I mean they sleep, but not for long. They've been sleeping all night. Really. 
Because I didn't sleep, I went and washed my car. And, oh my God, this car is filthy. <laughs> this car is filthy wealthy. Um, I did that too. Yeah, uh, one of my daughter's birthday this weekend, she's going to be seven. And you know what? Honestly, I don't want to admit this on camera, but I forgot that it... Oh, Jesus. No, that's not going to close. You know when you working under stress? You working under stress and you literally... I forgot that my daughter's birthday is on Sunday. She's going to be seven. And so, I bought her... Oh Lord, this don't sound like. Do I have to take this back? I bought her 